Well, when you think about the 1930s, it's this incredible period in human history, and a very dramatic one. You start with the Depression and you end with World War II. Movies change radically. You go from the beginning of sound up to its flourishing moment of 1939, which is one of the golden years in Hollywood. It's a very turbulent period. Many great films are created, many great posters and lobby cards and photographs are created. There's a look to this period which is unique to itself. And there's also the issue of the pre-code period which ends in 34. And before it ends, you get some extremely sexy and very, very explicit imagery, uh, such as you don't see afterwards. Uh, what comes afterwards is very beautiful and very special, but the pre-code period is very collected for its explicit content. Here we have two 8x10 glossies from the Warner Brothers musical The Gold Diggers in 1937. Busby Berkeley was known for his big kaleidoscope musical numbers and here we have Joan Blondell and the whole chorus doing the finale. Border Town. What an outrageous piece of flaming red Art Deco Betty Davis at her best. This window card is searingly hot. The colors, the vibrancy, the design, there's nothing like this in later poster art. Nothing. The Bride is one of those universal horror films that came a little bit after the first run of them in the early 30s. I believe it's 35. They felt it was time for Frankenstein to have a mate. Why they felt that was important, I guess they were trying to keep him happy somehow. So when I saw this Bride of Frankenstein card, which shows a lot of the characters on the side, and then shows the monster going up in flames in the main image of the poster, I jumped on it. Here we have a 10 by 13 authentic vintage color still of Marlene Dietrich from 1936. Oversized and finding a color still from this era is a great rarity. This is an incredible glamour shot. She's still at Paramount. She's still in her glory era and what an image. Here we have two lobby cards from the movie Marked Woman from 1937. In the first card here, which is an actual scene from the movie, we see Betty Davis in her beaded gown with a client in the clip joint where she works as what is called a hostess, which is basically a prostitute, which is how this type of character had to be presented in the 1930s. In the second card, we see her in what is actually opposed publicity still with Humphrey Bogart. And it indicates that there's somewhat of a romantic relationship between the characters, which in actuality in the story there isn't. And this was prime period Betty Davis and amongst the most collectible pieces on her. Um, this was the time where she was really starting to get great parts in movies and anything from this period on Betty Davis is highly collectible. The Hurricane, 1937, John Ford. Well, you get your Polynesian disaster movie at its best. This is a stone lithograph and it has that shimmer of lithography. It's a very romantic, colorful poster. And again, this is a very 30s look to it. A 40s poster would probably not be a lithograph and wouldn't have this kind of romantic richness. 1939 Hotel for Women, not a famous movie, but this is art by McClellan Barclay, one of the great pinup artists, and look at this design. This is in the tradition of the great late 30s pinup illustrations. This is an example of collecting a poster for its art without a whole lot of regard for what the film is. The Green Pastures was a really unique movie for the 1930s. It was based on a Broadway play that won a Pulitzer Prize. And what's interesting is that it was an all-black cast and very few mainstream movies during that period ever featured an all-black cast. And here, the main actor, Rex Ingram, who plays Delord, is um, featured in this really beautiful, unique art. Jimmy Cagney, oversized, double-white, autographed portrait, 1931. One of the earliest Cagney autographs you could possibly find, and what a beautiful image of a really young Cagney from around the era of Public Enemy. 